<laughs> My name is Alyssa Goodo. I am a connection coach with Connected Coaching Academy. And this is how I get all my students to smile for me whenever I'm teaching. They love the stickers. I have like a million of them. And this one's my personal favorite because if, if you can get a Chinese kid to stick out their tongue for you when they don't even know you, then that kind of means that you're winning. And it always breaks eyes. It's really fun. So today I want to talk about what it means to press the mental pause button. So I actually have a personal story that just happened yesterday. And so I thought it was kind of like perfect timing. Um, so we all kind of have these moments, I think, where we stick our foot in our mouths and it's just kind of like, I cannot believe I just said that. And so really what we're doing is we're kind of letting our emotions rule over our situation. And so we shouldn't be doing that. It, it wreaks havoc on our relationships and a lot of times it doesn't get us where we want to be. And I think that's something that a lot of us kind of forget is that in the moment of a conversation, you have a goal. Even if you don't realize what that goal is, you have an intention that you want something to be accomplished. Either you want that relationship to be richer, you want to be seen, you want to be heard, whatever it is that you're looking for, you're trying to get that reaction. But if you're hurt, if something triggers you and you're hurt, then you respond and it can actually lead you farther away from the response that you're trying to get. So. How can we kind of stop this? What's going on with this? So what happened to me yesterday? I, I realized that I was, I was talking to my fiance, I was talking to him and he wasn't answering me. And for some reason, this kind of triggered me. And I didn't, I, the logical part of me knew that he didn't actually hear me and that's why he wasn't answering. But sometimes, sometimes, cause this is just how guys are. They're so busy, it, especially because he has ADHD. And ADHD brings on a whole new challenge whenever you're living with a guy. So whenever he was he was doing something, you know, whatever it is, sometimes he'll he'll hear me, but he won't actually answer me because he's so busy with what he's doing. And sometimes this really bothers me. I quality time is really big for me. And so if I feel like I'm not being seen, if I'm not being heard, if you don't at least acknowledge me then this can kind of speak to my insecurity at times. And so I have, to, I have to recognize that and put a pause on it. Well, okay, so he's not answering me while, while I'm asking him these questions and I hear the car outside is ready to go and he's, clearly he's going somewhere and he's a homebody, he never goes anywhere. So I'm wondering, where is he going? And instead of just kind of, you know, stopping him and being like, hey, I asked you something, you know, what, what is, it? or just handling it differently. I started getting really passive aggressive because that's, that's how, um, that's my defense mechanism is passive aggression. So I'm not proud of it, but that's just, that's how I tend to um, default. And so it kept going and eventually it turned into well, I don't care if he's sleeping. <laughs> I don't care if he's sleeping. He can do what he wants. And he's just, and so you immediately start like feeling sorry for yourself. He doesn't, he doesn't want me to go with him, blah, blah, blah. I mean, just like the, the stuff that starts circling in your head. All from this one tiny little thing of like, not, not what, not repeating myself, not, not going up to him and just stopping and like having a conversation all over the small little thing. So all of a sudden, I kind of, I, I had the presence enough to stop myself in the moment and ask, what, what exactly is it that's bothering you here? So I, I found my trigger. In the process of asking myself that question, I found my trigger. My trigger was that I felt like I wasn't being paid attention to. I wasn't being validated and I wasn't desired. So that was my trigger. But what's funny is that this feeling and this acknowledgement led to the questioning of, but why? Why do you feel like this is, this is something that is, that is bothering you? Why does this speak to your insecurity? And as, as a little girl, our dad had, well, my dad had left for a while and he, he had a habit of like just picking up and leaving and then not saying anything but he would like leave the family so like we would come home from school or something and all of his stuff would be gone and then it would just like that would just be it and then at some point or another he would come back and then you know things would be fine 
but as a, as a kid, that didn't bother me. I mean, honestly, like I, we, we didn't really have conversations about it. Um, it just didn't bother me. Like eventually it just happened so much. So I was just kind of like, yeah, he's gone, you know, whatever. And even as an adult, I didn't feel like it bothered me. I mean, it, this has happened 10 plus years ago now. And there's just, there's been so much that has changed over time. And me and him are good now. And there's just things happen. I understand now as an adult, I understand what was going on then. And I just kind of made my peace with it. But apparently in this moment, I was relating what my fiance was doing, him just trying to like, you know, go to the store and grab something or whatever without, you know, like to, he, he wanted to go ride on his bike just to go, just to go to the store real fast. He's running the second by himself. And so this, him doing something innocent for himself became a trigger for me. And I didn't even realize that it was something from that long ago that was bothering me. And so actually it wasn't so much the trigger of like, I don't, I don't feel like he wants me. It was more the trigger of, I feel abandoned. I feel abandoned and unwanted by somebody that I love. And so just by kind of recognizing that and coming to terms with it and just kind of the reminder that nobody's abandoning me, uh, that it's not because, and there was a lot to un undig with something like a, a parent leaving you, right? There's a lot of that, well, they left because I did something wrong or they left because they didn't like who I am, you know, like that kind of childhood thought. And we don't realize how much we carry that into adulthood. And so just having to sit down and talk with yourself and be like, it had nothing to do with you. There's so much bigger. And even if they didn't want you, that doesn't actually change. Do, do you enjoy you? It, there's a lot of personal relation that needs to happen there. And so just coming, having a conversation with yourself about these triggers and recognizing them and hitting the pause button was really big. So whenever I was able to hit the pause button for a second and like kind of like it hit me all at once, I, I don't know how that that previous thing came to light at the surface, but whenever I finally dealt with it and just kind of sat with it for a second, immediately like my, my pain and my fear, it just kind of settled. And then I was actually just able to just, oh, he's just going somewhere and coming right back. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. Keep on living your life. And so it, it's always good to have a conversation with your partners about it too. If, you know, if that's something that you feel like you need to do, um, just, just know that hitting the pause button can be really helpful because instead of just responding out of your emotions, your emotions are there to trigger you to something. They're, they're telling you something deeper about something that you've experienced and that you maybe haven't dealt with all the way that you need to address. So, let those, let those moments of insecurity, of pain, of frustration, of all these things, let it be a reminder to you to keep digging and doing the work and then stop and ask yourself, well, what do I ultimately want out of this interaction? And just being honest about that with the other person. Um, there are a lot of times where honesty that I thought that I, I've always felt like I've had to be manipulative in order to get what I need out of people. And that sounds really awful, but it, in, the, in the way that my family worked, it was almost like you had to perform in order to get attention. And so I, it, it's something that has been portrayed to me a lot. And so in my adult life, I'm learning that being very upfront and honest with people about what I'm thinking actually is more helpful. So and people are a lot more generous than we ever give them credit for. We feel like, well, if I'm honest, then they're going to think I'm stupid or they're going to judge me or whatever. And if people are doing that to you for being honest, that's a sign that they, you need to put distance between them. It's not a you problem. It's a them problem, if that makes sense. And it's okay to put distance between you and somebody else that feels that way or that makes you feel that way. Because people who are genuinely kind and loving and caring about who you are, they will hear that honesty and resonate with it and probably even help you through it and be like, yeah, I get that. If you're being honest and telling me that you just, you feel uncomfortable right now, guess what? I feel uncomfortable right now too. And then a lot of times that mutual honesty builds the bond a lot stronger and deeper. 
and it just makes everything better. So that, that kind of helps you get toward that goal interaction that you want. So anyway, I hope this is helpful and I hope you keep digging and growing. And if you had a moment of, of interaction like I have and you want to share it, please leave it down below. I'd love to hear from you.